Here we are, the Caddis Maximus Big and Large Wrench Review. I'm doing this review for a couple different reasons. Not a review of a specific brand of uh, combination box wrenches, but there is just almost no YouTube videos. As a matter of fact, I did a little searching, searching for big wrenches and large wrenches, and there's like, seriously, there's like five videos. So this is for people who uh, just want to look up big and large wrenches, get an idea of how big they get. These aren't the largest that are physically made, but it's certain they are some of the bigger ones that you might ever see in a uh, industrial tool shop or some kind of big box store that has a lot of tools. And for anybody else who just might be into large, excessively heavy, and outsized tools, there's a million TV shows uh, all across the world about all sorts of industrial construction earth moving and just all these you know shows like that but hardly do they ever even bother to mention any of the tools that they're using to work at a refinery or at a steel mill or any of that kind of stuff and so these are some of the tools that you may find hanging up on a wall in the maintenance department at a steel mill or at a shipyard or something like that this also provides a little closer look at uh, the quality of the wrenches and see how some stack up when they get to the larger sizes. A lot of times when you get to the larger tools, regardless of manufacturer, the fit and finish isn't quite as nice just because they're so much more difficult to deal with and the in expenses involved are so much higher. Everything from the tooling, the forges that forge the big wrenches obviously have to be a lot larger. And they reach a point which is somewhere around the three, three and a half inch range um, before they don't even forge tools anymore and with sockets it's about the six inch range where they're no longer forged just the, the forging presses are too big the dies are too expensive and not to sell just a few wrenches and most of all those giant tools that may exist are custom machined out of billet steel we do have a selection here though from snap-on PNC which is proto uh, we got a William super wrench uh, another style snap on some proto. We have a Black Hawk, more protos. Then we have these Tecton wrenches, which are definitely cheap wrenches. It's actually taken me several years to piece together this set. I've been really cheap about it. Uh, I'm just waiting till I run into one, wherever it's a flea market or maybe an estate sale, something like that. Uh, and you, I just keep a little list on my phone of what size wrenches I have so I don't accidentally buy any duplicates and I've been able to piece together a pretty nice set. The two snap-ons were the most expensive ones just because of their their name uh, but they also happen to fit the bill. Surprisingly enough I paid like $50 for this wrench and I also paid like $50 for this giant two and a half inch Tecton. And we'll just jump right into the Tectons here. They're all manufactured just about the same with these larger, cheap, uh, Chinese-made wrenches, they're okay. Uh, they use an alloy steel, but they're not chrome vanadium um, or chrome molybdenum. Usually, any tool manufacturer that uses one of those two materials uh, really advertises it because they're well-known and they're expensive. So, these kind of wrenches may not be carbon steel, but, you know, I doubt there would be any arguments that they're the highest grade of tool steels. Another thing that ends up happening with these large wrenches, as you can see here, is where they end up grinding the buckle kind of at a steep angle. And it kind of looks strange because it's really thick up here and looks a little thinner down there. This is still more than thick enough for any work that you would apply to this wrench. Several people could stand on this wrench uh, while operating it. And it is operating because this thing weighs like 15 pounds. And so when they forge it, you get the thick flashing, and it just really seems that uh, they meant they just didn't grind it very evenly, and they meant to grind a little more off the top, or should have, so it would have had a little more even of a box. Otherwise, it's kind of nice. You know, these Tectons have worked out okay. Uh, I'm sure most of these wrenches come from the same manufacturers, but Tecton is a bu real budget tool brand, kind of like a Harbor Freight tools that you don't find at Harbor Freight. But they try to experiment with unique stuff, and... Um, and they charge really, really cheap prices. I think for all of these wrench, these five Tectons that I have here, uh, minus this Proto, was somewhere in the range of 100 or 150 bucks. It all together, these wrenches and a few more I was going to show you are about 350 dollars over probably a long time, 10 years or something like that. 
And to give you an idea what I mean by square buckles, here's a large two inch proto. And you can see the fit and finish on this wrench, you know, it isn't the prettiest. It's definitely not the prettiest. And this is a better example. That's just the way protos are, but they do work. But you can see they still have a little bit of that issue where they didn't grind the flashing quite perfectly flush, but you can tell the proto is still a lot straighter. As well as being, of course, made of uh, high quality steel. To give you an idea how big these wrenches, uh, just a two inch, you can see that right on my hand as you're seeing the other one. This whole wrench, and this would be another aspect of high quality wrenches. If we take a look, the cheaper wrenches tend to only be as long as like a standard box wrench. And there's like links where they're just a certain particular size is within a uh, like bolt size, like two and a half inch would be so long. And so like professional grade tools tend to be a little bit longer, give you a little bit more leverage. It's one of the reasons you go with them. As we can see here, this two inch proto is just about as long as this two and a half inch tectin. So that'd be one of the differences that you may notice. Continuing on, we got those off the table. You have like this black hawk, which uh, are really nice, but you can see where they didn't chamfer the outside of the buckle here just because um, of the additional expense. Now some wrenches, of course, uh, like the Williams. Williams have always been pretty nice. And here's a an old Williams Super wrench. One thing that Williams was known for is really having very thick, heavy-duty buckles on their wrenches. One thing that you can always tell a Proto or a PNC is these kind of rounded um, beams. Those are always the uh, Protos or PNCs. And then the newer Protos kind of got more standard-sized beams. But the Williams are always really square and really oversized. And then, of course, we'll take a look at the snap-on here, which, of course, is really nice, um, really nicely rounded, but even buckle on there. Nice little chamfered edges, and, of course, a real thick beam. These are thicker than they are proportionately on smaller wrenches because they know how heavy-duty uh, usage they get. And then, when you get larger than this, wrenches change to a different style known as interchangeable handle wrenches. And here's how interchangeable handle wrenches work. We just dug these out. Here's a few different kinds. These are, uh, this is a snap-on blue point. This is an offset, just a big version of an offset wrench. It's like a two and three sixteenths. And we got like a one and seven eighths and one and thirteen sixteenths. These are OTCs or Awatana Tool Company. Been around a long time. And there's a standard. All these have inch shanks. And then they actually use an interchangeable handle. It looks like a cheater bar, but when people think of cheater bars, there's some kind of piece of pipe that they put over the handle of a wrench to extend leverage. There are wrenches and actual cheater bars that are tools that are designed for that. And they're not a piece of conduit or something like that. They're a heavy steel pipe like this, made out of a tool steel, high alloy steel. This is 3 16 of a thick, uh, of an inch thick walls or five millimeter thick walls and of course a one inch inner diameter and so how these types of wrenches would work is you would have a bald a dent and you press it and it would interchange the blue point has a stop which is kind of nice these OTCs which are a little older don't have a stop so if you miss the hole the wrench will kind of get stuck but you'd use this head and of course this handle is huge we'll just run it across the screen Whoop, it's massive. It's like three feet long. And so you'd use this, of course, to break the bolt. And what's nice about these wrenches is one, they're relatively speaking, they're a lot cheaper because you're just buying interchangeable heads. You're always using the same handle. And then if you ever needed an open end, you just get a service wrench specifically, which is an open end only wrench just for screwing in on and off the fastener where you use this to torque and untorque it. What also, the second nice thing is, once you've broken the fastener, if this is all you have, you can of course pull off the handle, and now you're not swinging around the 30 pound wrench, you're just swinging around this handle. And then of course we actually have the service wrenches, which are just, just open end wrenches, which have relatively short handles. These aren't made for breaking bolts or ultimately tightening them, but for running bolts in and out, cinching them up, 
Uh, oftentimes in machine shops and industry, there's lots of equipment where you're constantly loosening and tightening bolts to reposition stuff, tool posts, ex mill heads, etc. And these will, of course, come in all sizes too. Um, and oftentimes there's good companies like Fairmount and Williams. So, and these are fairly commonly found, and I recommend getting them. These are great and um, can be used as a slugging wrench in the right situations. And speaking of how large they can get, let's get this onto the screen. We have all these wrenches, two and a half inch, all these are bigger than two inch. And then this wrench here weighs about 20 pounds, and of course, it just dwarfs everything. This is a three and a half inch service wrench. Uh, it's kind of funny to think of a 20 pound wrench three and a half inches as being a service wrench but it does have a short rounded handle a wrench like this and a combination box wrench would probably weigh 35 pounds uh, it would be a truly massive wrench that would be um, as big as a high school student or something like that but just for the people out there who wonder how big tools can get here's a nice idea this wrench both hands and of course, anytime you have friends or anybody over and they see a wrench like this that's as big as somebody's leg, uh, they're always impressed by it and want to uh, take a look at it. So anyway, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Caddis Maximus out.